miss you, man. How's mom? Mm -hmm. What about dad? After four seasons, Atlanta recently concluded its six-year run with its finale, It Was All a Dream. The episode focuses on Darius and the hallucinations he experiences from his appointment at a sensory deprivation tank while Ern, Al, and Van visit a black-owned sushi fusion restaurant. We start off with Darius chilling on the couch wearing headphones watching Judge Judy. Ern asks if he's ready to leave to the restaurant, but Darius informs him that he'll catch up with them later as he has his deprivation appointment to go to with errands to run in between. Next, Darius interacts with a kindred spirit at a pharmacy who reveals that she has also had experiences with a sensory deprivation tank. Darius tells her that the way he's able to differentiate being in the tank or not is if he sees Judge Judy on TV and views her as thick. Damn. If she's thick, he's in the tank. If she's not thick, he's not in the tank and everything is real. Throughout different parts of the episode, we see Darius wake up from the tank, thus leading the audience to question what is real and what is not. He then sees an old friend from his past drive by him and gets into the car with her to catch up. They smoke together, she tells him she's also been drinking, and then they get stopped by the cops because of her car tints. She passes a sobriety test while Darius is still in the car. She then steals the officer's gun, drives away, but accidentally hits a young boy on a bike. She runs away, leaving Darius in the car with the gun. Darius then visits someone who is revealed to be his sick brother. He expresses how much he misses him and asks how their mom and dad are, but gets no answer. He then sees a thick Judge Judy on the television. Ern, Van, and Al are not enjoying their experience at the sushi restaurant and are feeding to go to Popeyes, which is across the street the entire time they're there. As they leave, the owner has a speech about his perspective on black culture and black businesses. He then tries to lock the three in the restaurant until Darius arrives to help them escape. They drive off in a pink Maserati with Popeyes under their seats for each of them, courtesy of Darius. In the last scene, Darius reveals that he stole the pink Maserati, but that it doesn't matter because he believes that he's still in the tank, to which Ern tells him that he's not. Darius then states that maybe it's just a dream and that they're all in it. Ern, Van, and Al go outside to smoke weed, but Darius says he'll join them in a bit. He then takes a good look at them through the window. As he stays inside for the time being, he watches Judge Judy as it's playing in the living room. We hear sirens in the background and see Darius smile as he looks at the TV, but we don't see if Judge Judy is thick or not, leaving it up in the air whether or not what we just saw was real or a dream. And that's it. That was the last episode of Atlanta. And after a few rewatches, it's safe to say that this finale is one of the greatest finales in television history. It was hilarious. It was sad. It was thought-provoking. It was bittersweet. It was everything that we know the show to be. Atlanta is many things. A comedy. A drama. A satirical examination of society. But above all else, it's a surreal fever dream that captures the most wild of imaginations. The show includes outlandish and unpredictable elements that are out of the ordinary. We witness things like an invisible car, are introduced to eccentric characters like Teddy Perkins and Mr. Chocolate. We even see Alexander Skarsgård portrayed as a cannibal. When you view Atlanta for what it truly is, which is surrealist art, it's fitting that the main character should be viewed as none other than Darius, which makes sense that the finale is primarily about him. Throughout the show, we come to understand who our main characters are as people by the small parts of their backstories that are revealed to us, bit by bit. Except Darius. He's viewed as the comedic relief of the show and his backstory is mostly ambiguous and unknown. But in the finale, we get an understanding that the show's most laid-back character, who seems to be at peace with everything, is dealing with grief and battling his own demons. Losing his family likely caused Darius to lose touch with reality but the pain of losing his loved ones has affected him this whole time. It's common for us as people to blur the lines of the harsh reality of the present so we can feel the euphoric nature of our past where we felt more alive. We create our own alternate scenarios in life to mask our grief because we refuse to deal with it. We make them up so we have something to look forward to since the pain we feel makes it seem like there's nothing for us in the present. Darius goes on these tank sessions to avoid dealing with the hardships of reality and in doing so, has affected his perception of what reality is, leading to a carefree life. But the pain remains. He can't change the fact that his brother isn't there anymore, or his mother and father. That grief is something that he has a constant battle with. 
but he has three best friends to help him cope with that grief. However, those three won't be there as much anymore. Ern, Van, and Lottie are moving to Los Angeles to finally start their lives together as Ern takes a high-end job. Al is a solidified music artist and is in the process of finding peace within himself, something he's always desired. We've gotten closure with everyone but Darius. Until the last scene. Whether Judge Judy was thick or not, whether those police sirens meant the cops were after him, it doesn't matter. Darius was appreciating the moment before him. He's there, with all three of his best friends, in the present. And that's all that matters. That's the closure Darius needed. In just 30 minutes, we found out all we needed to know about Darius. 30 minutes. Is this finale ambiguous? Sure. Darius's smile could mean everything that transpired was real or that it was all a dream. But the best finales are the ones that are talked about years after they air. Was the entire show a figment of Darius's imagination? Maybe he isn't with us anymore. The fact is, this episode will have us looking at things that occur throughout the show differently and we'll have discussions about it for a long time. While the episode was Atlanta's finale, it didn't necessarily feel like a finale. It seemed like a standard Atlanta episode that was the last one to air. But Atlanta was never the type to follow the formulaic structure of a television show. There's no singular storyline, things sometimes don't make sense, and we move on from one episode to another. After season 2, we thought we were introduced to a villain in Clark County, who would be a thorn in Al's side as he entered the next phase of his rap career. But that didn't happen, and it didn't go that way, because Atlanta isn't that type of show. It's about five characters. Ern, Al, Darius, Van, and the city of Atlanta. Everyone's headed their own way. Who knows where that may be, but the only thing we do know is that Atlanta isn't going anywhere. And it'll be there whenever we need it.